Let's get back to the COVID-19 restrictions and in particular border closures and what they're doing to this country now. We'll duck down to Melbourne again and catch up with Simon Westaway. He's with the Australian Tourism Industry Council. Thanks for joining us, uh, Simon. These border closures, uh, uh, they're not all equal, all right? You know, the, the, the Queensland border closures with New South Wales are, are a different kettle of fish to the South Australia-Victoria border. What are you calling for our state governments to do to try and rescue as many tourism businesses and jobs as possible? Well, good day, Chris, and uh, evening to your viewers. Um, look, it's been a state of confusion for a long period of time now, and uh, we have to go all the way back to that uh, mid-May declaration by the PM out of National Cabinet, 8th of May, a three-part process to, to get us out of um, out of the virus and a, and a roadmap, and a, and a roadmap which all the all the premiers and, and the two chief ministers signed up and agreed to. Now, the missing link at the time we identified this was issue of borders. Um, obviously, there's the sovereign right of the states and the territories within our constitution to, um, to have management over their borders. But uh, I think everyone sort of thought they'd read the memo and we get to where we've got to. And where we've got to is this. We're in, we're in mid-August. We've got 300,000 Australian tourism businesses. A large majority are on JobKeeper. A large majority are going to the wall. And uh, we have this crazy double down that continues on our borders. In the last week, we've had a 30 to 35 percent seven-day rolling reduction in COVID transmission within our community. It's obviously still too high, and obviously emanating mainly out of the state that I reside in, Victoria. But we've had this significant level of ongoing double down by uh, numbers of states, almost to prove a point to their own constituency that somehow they can be tougher than the next state premier or chief minister. And look, yeah. we're, it's, it's a crazy situation. Well, it's mad. I mean, there's, look, the Victorian situation should be dealt with separately. I'd have an argument about that, but let's leave it aside because most people will say that you don't want free travel out of Victoria at the moment. But besides that, there should be free travel around the country completely. There's no level of infection in New South Wales, Queensland or anywhere else that, 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 that justifies any border being closed. Let me just show you what the Prime Minister said about borders in Parliament today. And that's why borders in principle within the Federation are not a good idea and we should avoid having them wherever we possibly can and they should only be applied when the health advice absolutely demands it. There you go. He's generally uh, on side, Simon. The issue is, too, you say states have the sovereign right. Well, uh, the, a lot of constitutional lawyers would question that. Someone needs to run a challenge in the High Court. We need to get a ruling on this because states doing this willy-nilly when there's not sufficient justification, they're doing enormous harm not just to their own citizens but to Australians elsewhere. Yeah, look, it's a fair question. I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer. So um, going by what, what we understand to be the situation, and there was a, there's a test case in WA which obviously isn't going anywhere at the moment, I understand it, but I don't want to dive into that, uh, that quagmire. I mean, what, what we can say is this, is that a set of principles, a set of guidelines. This afternoon, the Business Council of Australia, which our organisation and many other premium business bodies have co-signed, to say, let's get some principles in place. Let's work through a pathway to get us out of this situation. Uh, ultimately, we will have very, very little community transmission of COVID in this country because of the suppression, suppression um, strategy that's been adopted and the, obviously the significant level of investment by our health authorities into trying to um, corral the virus. And so we're coming to this, we've been at this juncture for a while and we shouldn't have to wait until the October, late October state election in Queensland to work out if we're allowed to go to the next hurdle to try to find some ways of uh, re-levitering up the borders. I'm with you. We should be working on ways to get these borders open up now, not, not, in, not in coming months, weeks, wherever it's the will of a particular Premier and Chief Minister. Indeed, the sooner but the better. Thanks for joining us, Simon. That's a pleasure. Simon Westaway, who's with the Australian Tourism Industry Council.